ओके येस्टरडे वी फिनिश द टॉपिक ऑफ डिले स्टडीज एंड द सेम लेक्चर वी हैव द स्पॉट स्पीड स्टडीज एंड ट्रैवल टाइम स्टडीज वी डिस्कस एंड टुगेदर बिकॉज दे आर रिलेटेड टू ईच अदर ओके uh now we are starting with a new topic that is about volume studies and this is topic number 4 from chapter number 10 of your textbook we start with a bit of revision uh what is volume per unit time and when we say volume your unit of time is what Hour or more? Okay, hour or day. Fine. Rate of flow. The unit of time is still one hour. What's the difference between volume and rate of flow? You get what? Flow. You get flow for fifteen minutes. Convert it to one hour. Okay. So you can have two values, uh, which are per hour, meters per hour, but we call one of them as volume if it is observed for 1 hour and call the other one as uh, rate of flow if it is only observed for uh, for less than 1 hour and convert it to 1 hour okay then we have demand demand means what what is demand number of meters on the road okay and what else No, no. Definition. How much cars are on the road? How much car? How many cars won't be on the road? That's fine. People. How many people? Okay. And capacity. Number of cars that the maximum. The maximum volume the road can handle. Okay. Now all these four parameters can be in meters per hour. They can be PC per hour as well. PC means what? We saw it in the last example yesterday. PC is what? Ah? Uh? Ah? Uh, now we are making terms. Ah? Huh? We have become so advanced. We can make our own terms. Passenger cars, you wrote it. Okay. Passenger cars per hour. Okay, and you can do it per lane as well. So because per hour per lane, passenger cars per hour per lane. These are common units for all these four terms. Volume changes according to demand. People plan their activities, and that generates demand. And the demand is basically affecting the actual. volume this demand can change in different times of the day okay demand in the morning hour is not the same in the evening hour okay demand can change in different days of the weeks as well your activities on the weekends don't tell me about them but they are different than the weekdays they are different in nature your timings of travel is different your timing of trip is different your route is different okay maybe your mode of travel is also different okay so they can change according to different days of the week as well they can change in different months and seasons as well we are in a special season right now which is what ramadan okay to compare the trend of ramadan the the demand trend of ramadan with any other month you will not find any similarity okay even the tasks we are doing in routine like Coming here and so on. Even at that times, you will see the difference. Yes. One p.m. No, everyone gets up at two. Hmm. I don't know who made that decision. Fine. Okay. Okay. And demand can change because of singular events as well. Okay. For example, heavy rain. People may decide to change their Uh, activities according to the weather okay now there is heavy rain so i will not go there or i will go there because there is rain okay so and so heavy rain is an unplanned event 
And when they are, then they are planned events as well. Like what? What is the example of a planned event? Then. the formula one the national days and so on okay so these are planned events now uh, so you can see there is so much variation happening in the in traffic all of these things are causing what variation in traffic right so it's changing according to time and day and month and event the event can be planned it can be unplanned something which i didn't know at that like Maybe the event can be something which I didn't know maybe half an hour ago. Okay, so how can I manage traffic with all this changes happening, all these changes happening? How do I manage my traffic? I cannot raise my hands, I cannot back up, back out that, okay, in this hour, it's not my problem. Or on this day, it's not my problem. Okay, all days and all hours are part of your job. Okay, so to manage traffic effectively with so much variation, we need live data, real-time data. Okay, traffic should be managed on the basis of real-time data. Okay, so there's an approach or there's a complete system of management of traffic which is known as intelligent transportation system. Okay, so this system works on live traffic data, real-time traffic data. Okay, so you gather the data which is happening right now, whatever it is happening and you change uh, your strategies, management strategies according to that data. Okay, a very important part of this system is driver awareness. Instead of you doing everything, we inform the driver so that he can avoid what is bad for him or her. Okay, so you inform the driver on this highway there's a bad traffic jam. Okay. 90% of the drivers may not even come out on that highway at that time. Okay? So just through a message, you reduce the traffic load, right? Those 90% of drivers would have been there and the traffic jam would have been worse. So you avoided that. Okay? Just through awareness. Now, how can we aware the driver? There are different channels. You can have, uh, uh, you know, uh, radio transmissions, uh, there are news channels, okay, social media platforms, okay, even the traffic departments and government departments have their own pages now, they have their own social media channels, okay. In Pakistan, they even have a WhatsApp group as well, you can subscribe to it. So, uh, in some countries, they use electronic boards on different highways, okay, so whenever there's something happening, the board will show you the message, traffic jam ahead, construction work ahead, Okay, reduce the speed, so on. Okay. These figures are showing you an example of variation. So this is based upon real data. Okay. The figures are drawn based upon real data collected from the highways. So uh, each figure, each graph is for a different type of highway. Okay. So different type of highway means the area is different. For example, the first one is between two cities. So the area is outside the city. The second one is for a recreational place, recreation route. So it's going to a picnic place or entertainment place, something like this. And the third one is within the city, a local route, which is within the city. Okay. Do all these three graphs look same to you? There is some variation, right? In all of them, there is some variation. Okay? They are not similar to each other. Okay, so you, can, you see variation according to location and type of height. Now, you see all graphs, they are going up and down, right? Okay, so they are going up and down on the basis of what? What is this? This is time. So you can see variation according to time. Okay, you can see it can go from this low to this high. These are thousands of vehicles, okay? Thousands of vehicles. Uh, then in each graph you see three lines, right? So each line is representing a different day. Okay, so you see lines have their own peaks. 
they are not going up and down in the same manner even in the same graph even on the same time okay so you see variation according to different days as well okay clear perfect thousand of so two means two thousand okay so you can see three types of variations here according to location according to time and according to days there is another graph given in your book which is according to different uh, uh, seasons as well months okay you can have a look at it but this is the example okay what's the point the point is the variation in traffic is very high okay and it changes in different days and locations so anything which is from one location and one time cannot be applied to other location at that time or even same location same time cannot be applied to another day okay you cannot say okay peak hour is between uh, uh, like you were saying 1 pm okay so it's not 1 pm every day okay it's 1 pm maybe 4 or 5 days okay so there is nothing constant here now volume is studies on a highway difficult we are doing a volume study on a highway difficult yes or no yes obviously that's why i'm asking yes or no please depends okay difficult or not ha huh? difficult okay but it doesn't matter still you have to do it as part of your term projects okay clear so whatever you were thinking in your mind is easy okay because you have to do it clear now uh, so and if you look at the previous topics we did some examples we talked about volume studies on highways earlier as well okay there was a lot of discussion there were some examples as well which were related to volume and flow and flow rate and peak hour factor okay so that was already covered this is already covered okay now we are moving towards more advanced versions of uh, volume studies okay doing a simple volume study on a highway we already covered we are moving forward now okay so volume studies on intersections they are a bit more complicated okay another name given to it is turning movement counts turning movement counts okay so whenever you hear the word turning movement counts that means it's a volume study done on intersections clear okay now we prefer to do the volume studies on intersections manually we prefer to do it manually why what's the problem with using a sensor of uh, for doing a volume study on that intersection what's the problem with that do you see any problem with that hmm? if you put a sensor on the road near an intersection the sensor gives you a value is there any problem with that value it is solving my problem i don't have to go to the highway now i don't have to do it manually will there be any problem with that value oh ah manual will have errors of course if you are doing it of course <laughs> what's the name turning movement count turning movement count number of cars which are turning in different directions it cannot give you a sensor will give you how many cars passed where they are going it cannot give you that the sensor has more error in this case okay even you would have better accuracy than the sensor in this case because a sensor cannot sense the directions the turning okay so we prefer to do it manually because that is supposed to give you the real sense of turning movement where the car is going you can see it and you will note it according to its movement according to its turning movement okay clear 
Now, uh, yeah, uh, when you are doing it manually, uh, yes, uh, we talked about uh, a term called VIP in the second topic I believe. What is VIP? Uh -huh. ah, well, we are still with that, okay. Very good. Video image processing. Okay. This is one solution to manual counting here. If you are taking video image and you have the system which can process it, then this is your solution for manual counting. Because in the video you can see the weaker strand. Okay. So normal sensors will not be so accurate. But if you can use a video image processing system, okay, a VIP system, then uh, you may get rid of manual count. But like I mentioned, it there at, uh, at that time, it needs a lot of uh, calibration, okay, to do that. A lot of work is required. You have to look for position of the camera. And there are many issues. So okay, so it's not fully implemented yet, okay. But the system is available. Okay, and it can solve your problem of manual counting here. But let's say we don't have the system right now, and we won't, we don't want to do it with the sensor because sensor will not detect the turning movement. So we'll do it manually. And when you are doing the counting on intersection manually, the most important thing, or one of the most important thing, is the position of the observer, where the observer is standing, and which movement he is counting. Okay, so there are different movements happening, right? Some people are turning right, some people are going straight, some are taking left turn, some are taking U turn. Okay, so you have a person who is standing on the side of the road. Okay, and you ask him, count the vehicles turning left. This is your move. Is it good or not? He is standing on the side of the road and he is counting people turning left. Is it good? Yes? Okay. We are standing on the side of it. We are trying to count vehicles which are going in the far direction. Okay? Yeah. So we should change his position if he wants to count the left hand, right? Otherwise, from here, his vision will be blocked most of the times. Okay? Well, so if he wants to take a left hand counting, it should be maybe on the median. Okay? Or maybe over a bridge or something. All right? Okay. So the uh, position of the observer is very important to reduce the error. Uh, for volume studies on the intersections, we uh, we uh, count vehicles when they leave the intersection, when they depart from the intersection. Meaning what? Departing from the intersection when they leave the stop line. When they leave the stop line. So they are standing behind the stop line right now in a queue, I'll not count them. I'll only count them when they cross the stop line. Okay? So five cars leave the stop line, I'll count these five. 20 cars are standing behind the stop line, I'll not count. Okay? Where do we count these cars? In which study we need these cars, which are in the queue? Delay studies. Okay? This is not delay studies, this is volume. So volume is only departure, leaving the intersection. Okay? Yeah, another important issue is how many movements, because as I said, each direction has three, four movements, right, left, U turn, straight. So how many movements you assign to the observer? It depends upon the observer himself, his experience and skill, and it also depends upon the, uh, the traffic of the movement, okay? If the observer is very experienced, very skilled, okay, he is doing this job since his childhood, we didn't have anything else to do in life. We just went on the road and counting cars. Okay, there are some people like this. So, that type of observer may do more than one heavy movement. He may count two movements in uh, uh, in two different directions, both of them having high volume. He can this type of observer he can do this because he is quick, he is experienced, so he knows how to deal with it. Okay, but the observer is inexperienced. Okay fresh graduate, one of you, okay? So, in that case, one heavy movement is enough for that guy. Heavy means what? It has more, more volume, more vo volume, okay? So, uh, 
you assign him or give him a movement which has high traffic, that's enough for him. If you give him more than that, we'll make more errors. Okay? So a number of movements depend upon the type of observer and the volume. Okay? One thing which I mentioned again in topic number two, there was an example as well. We prefer to do counting lane wise. So one observer counts one lane. Why? What's the benefit in that? What's the problem if you are counting three lanes at a time? Why? Because you will? Why? Why one lane is more accurate than three lanes? Yes. Okay. In one lane, the people are going in a line, right? So it's easier to count. Three lanes, you are counting three, four vehicles going simultaneously. It's more difficult. Okay. So we prefer to do it lane wise. Okay. But then there is another problem that I have limited number of observers. If I put one on each lane, then I need more people. Okay. For that, what did we do? And uh, there was uh, an example in topic number two. What did we do there? There were four lanes and two observers. What did we do? But each side had two lanes, right? So alternative counts. Okay, so he took a break, then went to the other lane, then took a break, went back to the first lane, and so on. So on. Same thing can be done here if you want to manage the number of lanes with the observer. Okay, now you are counting vehicles which are leaving the which point? Which are crossing what? When do you count? When they cross? The stop line. Okay. It works in most of the cases. In most of the cases, this is fine. Because leaving the stop line, you count them, no problem. But when there is a traffic jam, okay? So you see 10 vehicles leaving the stop line, okay? And 50 are stuck behind them. You counted what? 10. Huh? The client comes and he asks, what is the demand? You say 10. What about these 50? You see the problem here. The actual demand is including these people who are stuck in the queue. Huh? The queue is 2 kilometers long. So you are not counting any one of them and then you are only giving him the number of cars which have crossed the stop line. It's not accurate, right? It's not accurate. Okay. So whenever we have such case, we should take the arrival volume. How many cars arrived? Not how many cars left. Arrived will include the queue as well, right? Huh? The arrival will include the number of people in the queue. Okay. So there are conditions that means now you have to decide which volume do I want? Do I want arrival volume or do I want departure volume? Okay. So for that they use a term which is known as unstable queue buildup. Okay. Whenever you have unstable queue buildup on the highway, on the intersection, then we need arrival. Okay, whenever you have unstable queue buildup, okay, on the intersection, we need arrival. If it is not unstable queue buildup, then we need departure. The same vehicle is crossing the stop line. Okay, so Zahma is for any type of congestion, right? Any type of traffic jam. Is Zahma. So, if there is Zahma on the intersection, how do I know? Okay, what I need to uh, cross check? There are two conditions given. If you meet any of these conditions, there is unstable queue buildup. And then we will take what? Arrival or departure? Arrival. Okay, if you meet any of these conditions, we will take arrival. First condition we already talked about delay in uh, talked about in delay study as well. If it's a signal, if there's a signal, if you see that the queue is so long, the signal becomes green and the queue does not pass. Some of the vehicles are left and they will pass in the next green. This is an indication of queue buildup. You need arrival volume. Okay? So the first condition is queue is very long and it does not pass. The first condition is related to a signal. 
The queue is so long, it does not pass in the green. Okay, people are waiting for more than one green to get their turn. Okay, this is unstable queue buildup. We need arrival. Second condition, if there is no signal, it's very easy. Just look at the queue. Is it increasing or not? That's it. If there is no signal, then you don't have red and green phase, right? You don't have red and green lights. So it's a roundabout. You go to the roundabout. You look at the queue now. Okay, it's this much now. After a few seconds, increased. After a few more seconds, increased more. If this is happening, this is again unstable queue buildup. You need arrival. Okay? Clear? Clear? Okay, now there's a problem with taking the arrival volume. I'm looking for the volume in the queue, right? I'm looking for how many cars in the queue. Okay? We said in the, again, something we discussed in the video yesterday. Is Q stationary or moving? Q is moving, right? When cars come, Q increases. When cars move, Q decreases. It happens, right? It keeps on happening. More cars come, Q increases. These cars get a chance to move, Q gets forward. Okay? So right now maybe it's here, two more car comes, uh, two more cars come and it increases up to this point. Okay? And then the signal becomes green. So these cars move forward. Okay. So how do I get the number of vehicles in the queue? I should run with the queue, right? I should run with the queue. Hmm? Agree? Huh? Arrival, arrival, arrival is here now. Then they move forward. So arrival is there. And people keep on coming. Huh? We are counting cars here. Yeah. In this whole topic, we will be counting cars. Are you going to count the same car twice? No, no. So we observe My observation point is changing. This is my issue. When you are counting departure, your observation point is the stop line, right? The stop line is fixed. It doesn't move forward and backward. But when I am counting arrival, okay, cars are arriving at different points. Sometimes they are arriving here because the queue is very long. Sometimes they are arriving there because the queue is now there. Okay, so you see it's changing. It's not the same point you are looking for. Once they reach the arrival point, we are counting them. But that arrival point is changing. Do we need to know when they leave the arrival to departure? We don't need to leave the... So why is don't... it going changing? This queue is here now. Yes. After five cars, it will be there. Yes. So your arrival point is? Okay. There. What about the entrance for this road? It's an intersection. Yes, so it's not... So same problem. You go from one intersection to the next intersection. And at that intersection, cars will be going in different directions. Entrance point means what? An intersection, right? Yeah. Will all these cars come to this intersection? No. Some, some of them will go to other directions. At the beginning, of beginning means an intersection, right? What's the beginning of the road? Yeah, but like right after the beginning. Right after the beginning. Very, very smart. Okay. You get the point. All of you understand the problem? You understood the problem? Why we need to go to the beginning? Okay. So we have uh, uh, a mathematical way to calculate these uh, arrival volume. Okay. This is the equation for calculating arrival volume. VAI means arrival volume in time interval I. Okay. VAI, arrival volume in time interval I. What do I need? VDI, departure volume in time interval I. Departure from the stop line. So I'm not counting arrival now. Departure from the stop line. NQI, number of vehicles in the queue at the end of time interval I. Number of vehicles in the queue at the end of time interval I. NQI minus one, number of vehicles in the queue at the end of previous time interval. I minus one means? 
previous okay so i is now and i minus 1 is the previous now you may say that we are still using number of weaker in the queue and the queue is moving so the problem is still there okay this n q is not a continuous count is just a one time count okay so i am not looking for how many vehicles in the queue now and next second and next second and next second no no when the time interval fin will finish i will look at the queue only once that's it and i'm done okay so i have a problem in counting vehicles in the queue continuously for one time i can do it no problem okay let me show an example so you see here the counts are taken from 4 to 6 pm 15 minutes interval and the departure and the queue length is given okay so from 4 to 4:15 there was a guy at the stop line he was counting how many vehicles are leaving he counted how many 50 when it was 4:15 when he finished the count he looked at the queue how many vehicles are in the queue or how many count done he saw zero he is done now he is counting again from the stop line q is done okay he is at the stop line again he is counting now he counted how many vehicles 55 55 till 430 right so when he finished at 430 he again looked at the q he found how many vehicles zero okay between 430 and 450 uh, 445 Now he's again looking at the stop line. He counted how many vehicles? Sixty-two. Huh? Sixty-two. Right? At four forty-five, he looked at the queue. How many vehicles he saw? Five. Okay. Now coming back to the equation of calculating arrival and departure. So, sorry, departure is given. Calculating arrival in the first time interval. Fifty left and nobody in the queue. So how many came? Fifty. Fifty. Between four and four fifteen, fifty vehicles came. All of them left, so there is no queue. Same book. Next time it was same, right? Same. Next one. Between four thirty and four forty five, sixty two vehicles left. Five of them, or five more, are in the queue. Okay, so how many total? Sixty-two plus five. Does any of them include Q from the previous time? There was no Q before this, right? In four thirty, there was no Q. Okay, so total number of vehicles arrived: sixty-two plus five minus zero. If you want to make the equation, minus zero. So sixty-two who left? Fifty-two. Oh, sorry, five were in the queue, and zero. Who were in the queue before? So total sixty-seven. Okay. Next time interval, how many came? Sixty-five. How much is the queue? Ten. Is this the queue? Uh, is this uh, the queue from this time interval? No. Five were from the previous time interval. So sixty-five plus ten minus five. Okay. So seventy. Okay. Similarly, you will calculate the other values as well. Okay. Now, what is happening? Come to the second last value, five thirty to five forty-five. Is there any Q? Five thirty to five forty-five. Is there any Q? Okay. So, how many departed? Sixty-two. How do I get fifty-seven here? Sixty-two plus the Q, right? Q is how much? Zero. But there was a Q before, so these sixty-two include that Q. So sixty-two plus, oh sorry, minus five. So arrival was how much? Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven plus five became the sixty-two. The one who left, they also included five from the Q. Got it or not? Arrival. Okay, this is arrival. So we are using this equation basically. Departure, second column, and then two values from the third column. Now and previous. Okay, plus now, minus previous. This one. 
clear okay and then you see the last value departure is how much 55 arrival is how much 55 because there is no queue now and there is no queue before so whenever you have two time intervals without any queue you will have arrival equal to departure okay last thing uh if you are doing a study on an intersection volume study on an intersection signalized intersection signalized intersection then we have an advantage because movements don't happen at the same time they are not happening happening randomly so they are not going random they are going according to timing of the signal so you can have less observers counting different movements in different time of the signal now this movement has green i will count this one then this movement has green i will count that one okay so i am the same person who can count multiple movements because they are in different uh, times of the signal uh you need to take into consideration the cycle length as well cycle length is from red to red right red to red your counting period should be a multiple of cycle length counting period should be a multiple of cycle length for example cycle length is 2 minutes So your counting period can be ten minutes. Ten is a multiple of two, right? Okay. If you, for example, if you take the counting period fifteen minutes, is it a multiple of two? Is fifteen a multiple of two? No. So we cannot take it. Why? If you take ten minutes with two minutes cycle length, how many cycles you will have in ten minutes? One cycle takes two minutes. So how many cycles in ten? Five cycles. If you take fifteen minutes, how many cycles? Seven point five, right? So what will happen in this point five? Because seven cycles are complete, it will show more volume. The last cycle is incomplete, right? It will show less volume. Why? Because there is less traffic? No. You cut the cycle. If you finish the cycle, you will get actual volume. Okay, so you don't want to cut the cycle. That's why counting period should be a multiple of cycle length. So you complete all the cycles. If you cut the cycle, volume will be less. Okay. Uh, yeah, we take breaks as well, right? We take breaks as well. Break period should also be a multiple of cycle length. The break period should also be a multiple of cycle. Length. So counting period is a multiple of cycle length. Break period is a multiple of cycle length. Total will also be multiple, right? You count for ten minutes. Multiple of two, right? Or multiple of cycle. You rest for two minutes. Multiple of cycle length, right? Total twelve. Ten plus two, total twelve. Is it a multiple of cycle length? So every counting period, counting period, break period, total period, all of them should be multiple of cycle length. Okay, there is one exception here, which is when you have signals with a sensor. We call them actuated signals. So what happens? According to the data from the sensor, signal timing changes. Signal can increase or decrease yellow time, flashing green. These times can change. So these times change, meaning the cycle length is changing, right? The cycle length is changing. So which cycle length I will take now? Maximum. We will take max, uh, multiple of maximum cycle length. So cycle length is changing between one minute and three minutes. Your counting period, break period, total period should be a multiple of three. The maximum length. Okay, the maximum. Got it? Because I don't have a constant number, right? So I have to take one. Which one? I will take the maximum. Okay. I want a multiple. The multiple of which cycle length? The maximum. Okay. Uh, why we are allowing this? Cycle length is changing according to what? What is changing the cycle? What is changing the signal timing? In actuated signals, why the signal timing is changing? Because of the because of the sensor, right? And since sensor is working on or collecting what traffic data, right? So cycle length itself is compensating for traffic, so you don't have to worry about. It. When the cycle length was fixed, 
it was my problem to complete it. When cycle length itself is changing according to traffic, I don't worry about traffic now. If I get more data, it is because of the sensor. Okay, so it is because of traffic. Okay, there's I'm not cutting any cycle. Even if I cut, it is because of the sensor. Got it? Clear? Hmm? Okay.